Pull up in motor cash. I got a show today. It's all I'm trying to do. Hustle and motivate. What's up, guys? I'm Brian. I'm your host. This is the Till You Collapse podcast, and we're back. What day is this today? It is March 15th. March 15th. Wednesday. The month is half over. The first quarter of the year is almost done. What the fuck have you done? The first quarter is gone just like that, bro. I know. Time flies. I got eight days till 25. Trust me, I know. Oh, shit. Your birthday's coming up, little guy. 25. <laughs> 25. 25. Ooh. When I was 25, I was having my first baby about to be broke and lose it all. <laughs> and look at you. You're driving around an AMG. You work for a great company. You have your own company on the side. You're doing well for yourself. You're doing a lot better than I was at that age. Doing a lot better than most 25 year olds on this right now. Yeah. So, why but is that? Just because that's what's instilled in me when I was younger, working. My parents have always been very entrepreneur like, so they always there you go hardcore discipline nonstop. Yeah. And Be- I know you talk about it, and you say like your stepdad's very similar to me, and he ingrained that in you in a young age. Yeah. But it obviously paid off because, like yes, said, you, you know, I know it sucks, and it's, a lot of times you don't want to hear it, you don't want to do it. But like, look at you now. Yeah, yeah. as a kid, trust me, I fu- I hated him. And like I, me, like my dad was a great dad, but very different. Like not an entrepreneur, you know, mm-hmm. he made multiple six figures, made great money, salesperson, hustling his ass off, but more of a save, 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 careful, closed mindset type of thing. Gotcha. Yeah. Very reserved. Very reserved. Yeah. So, we're, you know, and as you know, in life and entrepreneurship and business, you can't be reserved. No. That's all, you know. Yeah. And I'm not reserved either. No, I don't, I like sure. to yeah. <laughs> do stuff. <laughs> For sure. So what's up, guys? Hope you're doing well. It's sunny out here in Cali today. Thank God, because I can't, can't fucking stand this rain. It's been raining for like, feels like three weeks straight. I yeah, we need it. We need it, though. God, we need man. it, unfortunately. Just, places where it rains all the time. Now I see like, I've never really dealt with depression. I don't deal with that. I'm always in kind of a good mood, as you know. Like, I'm always positive. I'm always kind of upbeat. But, like, I can see why. Because it just, like, even for me, it, like, brings you down. Like, it's just cloudy, rainy. Like, places that it rains all the time, I feel for you guys. Fuck. <laughs> Imagine that 24-7. No. Yeah. I couldn't live there. Because <laughs> I like the sun. You yeah. know, my Persian ass likes to get out and turn golden. <laughs> a little too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little too much. <laughs> I need the sun. Oh, yeah. So, guys, please share this show. We're trying to grow it. Uh, we've been doing two episodes a week, this and Daddy Talk. Appreciate anyone that listens, anyone that gets anything from it. Share it on Instagram. Subscribe it. Review it. It's all I ask. I'm pouring my time, pouring my effort into you guys. I hope you get one, two things from these podcasts. And here's the thing. When you listen to podcasts, um, as long as you grab one or two things, and whatever you grab, make sure you apply it. If you learn something, run with it because, you know, there's tons of people that learn shit, go to fucking conferences, join these groups, read books, and they have all the knowledge in the world and they don't apply it and they don't take action. And action is, action is wins. Action wins over anything. Like, you know, somebody that doesn't know shit versus somebody that reading every book, going to every event, spending all this money. The person that takes action will win over the other person all the time because that other person never takes action and never actually gets started. So if that's you and that's you listening to this, realize that it's great taking in knowledge. It's great learning things. I see it all the time. I'm part of a couple entrepreneur groups and I've built some great, great friendships with those groups. And I see a lot of people that go to a lot of events. They don't miss an event. They go everywhere. They're always networking. They're always doing this because they get that dopamine hit and that high off that motivation. Everybody loves motivation. You get that high when you listen to someone speak. You see Ed or Andy speak. You see these guys speak that you look up to. You're around that energy. It feels good. You're learning shit. You want to post about it to your IG. You want to flex about it. And then when you go home and you're alone and no one's around and you're tired and you're broke and you're lonely and then you have to take action. You have to have discipline and make shit actually happen. That's what separate, That's what fucking separates the, the real 
versus the people that are doing it and not. And if you're listening to this, I just empower you. Take action. And I'm going to be talking about today some of my old school shit about me taking action and how I took action to start this whole thing fucking 10 years ago this year, my own 10 years. That's crazy. I've been doing this fucking thing. That's... Statistics are most companies do not last 10 years, nowhere near it. Most of them go under first couple years, actually, because you know why? This fucking shit's hard. And the shit's not for most people. I know that's the opposite you hear about all these feel good and all these people trying to get you to be an entrepreneur. Everyone wants to put in their bio, entrepreneur. You're not an entrepreneur unless you're doing it. Unless you have a team, unless you're impacting lives, unless you're in the game, you're making money, you're profitable. You've been doing this shit for years. Then you're an entrepreneur, okay? Let's just be clear about that because a lot of people like to put it in their bio. A lot of people like to feel like they're entrepreneurs. But in rea- reality is you, a lot of you guys are playing it. But what I want to talk about going back to the taking action is 10 years ago, 10 years ago, I was making 150 k a year. I was doing what I loved. I love fitness. You guys know I love fitness. Look at me now. I'm 40 and fucking jacked. I love fitness. I work out twice a day. My days revolve around my fitness. That's how much of a, important it is to me. It's my everything. I feel good. I look good. My mindset's right. If I didn't have fitness, I'd be fucked. So, you know, you think back 10 years ago, I'm in a gym. I'm the top position in the gym. I'm a sales general manager making 150 k a year in the place I love, working out on my breaks. I have it all, right? Like 10 years ago, like I was ready to be promoted to a, you know, a district sales manager, make 200 k plus, you know, doing what I love. But here's the thing. My goals are much bigger than that. And when you really dig into it and look at what, what a corporate job like that actually does is, you know, I was broke. So 150 k in California with a family of six. Six. I don't even know. At that point, I don't think it was six. It was a 10 years ago. How many people in my family 10 years ago? I think four. Uh, no, it was four. Yeah. Four. Cruz is 10. He was born 10 years ago. So it was oh, wow. a okay. family of four about to be five. So still yeah. a family of That's five. Still five, yeah. In California, off 150K sole income, we were... Just paying our bills, you know, renting a house, not owning, barely getting by, not really saving much. And reality of that fact is I, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to being in that place that I'm talking about right now. Um, and I, that wasn't okay with me. I wasn't going to go through this life just getting by. You know, I was still the kid inside that had posters of Porsches and Ferraris and Lamborghinis on his wall. Every time I see a car, my fucking dick gets hard. Like, I'm a car guy. Every car I have, I've modified. I love cars. They're a passion of mine. I'm sure I've told you guys that 50 times. I'll tell it to you guys 50 more times. Car guys get it. And girls. Car guys and girls. There's car girls too. But, you know... As much as from the outside in, like this guy has everything. He has a beautiful family. He's making over 100K a year. He's fit. He's top in the gym. You know, no savings whatsoever. Um, working, missing everything. Like, you know, going to work when your kids are asleep. Coming home when your kids are asleep. Working sometimes literally 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. So you guys talk about working hard and you guys talk about you think you're overworked. Imagine having five people relying on you and working from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. seven days a week and still barely paying your bills. So that's what I'm talking about. A lot of you guys are in this position. A lot of you guys want more. A lot of you guys talk about more. I get it. Whatever your passion is. Whether it be impact, whether it be traveling, whether it be cars, whether it be watches, whether it be fashion, whatever it is, I'm here to tell you, you know, being an employee and working a corporate job, 
if you have a family, normally it's hard to, to live an extraordinary life. Sometimes some corporate job, some sales job, especially because I love sales, you can make great, great money. But for the most part, if you want more, you got to take action and make it happen. If you want more, you got to take action and make it happen. No one's going to get you more but you. If you want to eat, feed yourself. No one's going to feed you. No one's going to give you shit. So 10 years ago, I decided, and I always had an entrepreneur bug. I knew, like I said, I didn't go to college. I wasn't educated. I knew that like, in order for me to drive these cars, in order for me to have the freedom to do whatever I want with my family, work whatever hours I want, if I need to leave for my kids' practice or game, I leave, I come back. These Memo knows, these guys know I'm in and out all day long because that's what, the freedom gives you, right? And that's what the goal was. So I was like, you know, and you guys know me, I'm a meathead. I'm a meathead, I'm great at sales, I'm great at discipline, I'm great at working. Much, not much, there's not much more that I'm great at. But, you know, I'm right, I'm wrapping my brain like, what, what can I do? You know, I had already, I'd already lost everything at this point. I'd already gone through that, that that very, very low point that I've talked to you guys about before where I lost everything. So I knew that leaving my passion of fitness for money wasn't going to work because I already did that once. I lost everything, went to the lows of lows, failed as a husband, failed as a provider, failed as a father. I'm never going back there. So I knew I was not going to leave my passion again. So whatever I do had to be rooted in fitness because I love fitness like, like we talk about all the time, fitness is everything. So I was like, you know, what can I do? What business can I start, you know? And um, back in about 10 years ago is when Instagram kind of started and everyone was getting on it, you know, and everything was kind of new and stuff like that. And uh, there was already a few good amount of companies, you know, it wasn't like I was the first. Shit, I w- that'd be nice if I was the first, but, you know, there was a good amount of companies before me. But I was just like, you know, obviously I'm not fashionable, I mean, look at the way I dress normally, especially before here. At least now I wear a nice TYC. I look good, you know. But before that, God help me. Oversized everything. (laughs) It was totally oversized. (laughs) Long shorts, long baggy shirts, pump covers. Old school gym bodybuilder. (laughs) You wear the jean shorts to the gym? Yeah. No, (laughs) I never did that, bro. That's kind of, you know, that's... That was a style back then. That was before my generation. That was, I wasn't quite there. I was almost there. That was, that was, those guys are a little older than me, about 10 years older than me. (laughs) But, um, so I'm like, dude. And the thing that really did it is one of my good friends, Eric, um, he was actually my employee at the time. He's Persian as well. So, you know, he's a hustler. He's got sales ability. He's fucking very, very smooth. And this, this kid, he was, you know, he's younger than me. He's about, I think, I if I remember right, about 10 years younger than me, maybe more. But I remember, you know, this kid, you know, he told me he had a clothing line. And I was like, you know, he was my employee. And I was always, you know, obviously I was his manager and he had all the talent in the world. But let's just face it, he was lazy like anyone that age. I think he was about 21, 22. So a lot of kids that age, you know, they don't want to work as hard. And he had talent, but he wasn't working hard. So he was all, he could sell anybody that was in front of him, but he didn't want to put effort in to get more people in front of him. But anyways, I was like, this guy has a clothing line. I can have a fucking clothing line, you know, and that's kind of where the spark of the clothing line happened because I was like fitness, fitness, clothing line. And then this is where the taking action takes place. Literally from that day. So if you have an idea in your mind, if you want more, if you yearn for more, this day and age, 10 years ago, there was no social media, there was no podcast, there was no YouTube, there was none of these resources. The skies are limitless as far as resources now. Let me just put that in perspective for you guys. So I was like, I'm going to start a clothing company. That's what I'm going to do. I only had 300 bucks. Fuck it. I'm going to make 25 t-shirts, 25 tank tops. I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to figure it out. I went home that night, stayed up all night, literally no sleep. That was how excited I was. I got on my old school computer, cracked, downloaded illegally, Photoshop 10 years ago, whatever fucking version, old version that was, downloaded it, cracked it, opened it up, 
I started playing with it. Like just taught myself right there, right then. I'd never used Photoshop before in my life. I'd never seen Photoshop before. But I opened it. I knew I had to design some designs for this new company I was going to start. I just thought about it that day. Started designing some shirts, designing some designs. I was a designer all of a sudden, overnight. Right? I stayed up all night and I was thinking of the name. I'm like, what the fuck am I going to name this company? Because here's the thing. I'll, I'll tell you guys two things. Names are not everything. A lot of people put too much emphasis on the name. They think names will make or break companies. And for the most part, they don't. But names can be important on the hindsight as well. I know it's the opposite of what I just said. But like I said, two people focus too much on the name as opposed to what the company stands for, what the company is about, the product, the customer service, all that kind of stuff that really matters more than a fucking name. But if you have a catchy name or if you have a name that people remember, it definitely helps you. It can help you than hurt you. But a lot, of, a lot of people like a company won't make or break because of the name. That's a better way to say it, right? And then I just thought of, you know, Till You Collapse. And the reason why I thought of Till You Collapse, like the Eminem song, Till I Collapse, right? You know, obviously back then, Eminem, 50, all that kind of stuff. Ten years ago, I liked that kind of music. You know, they were... They're still hot, but they were newer back then. So, you know, it was like I was thinking, well, what, what, what is fitness about? What is discipline about? What kind of qualities and, you know, ethics do you need to build amazing physique and the work that goes into it? And this is within a 24-hour period, guys. I'm trying to put in perspective to you. I'm really going back and taking you on this journey with me because a lot of you people are in this same situation or you just started. And I was like, till you collapse, you know? It was either till I collapse or till you collapse, but till you collapse is, I thought sounded better and, and I had more of a ring to it. And and basically, you know, till you collapse is that's the kind of effort we give. That's what this brand, and it's a definitely a different brand name. It gets a lot of attention, especially now that it's mainly women's stuff. It's like till you collapse. What the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, how does it have to do with leggings? You know, and. The way it has to do is rooted in the culture and the passion of the name of the brand is till you collapse. You go till you fucking collapse. You leave it all out there in life. Anything you do, if you go till you collapse. Think about that. When's the last time that you went till you collapse? When's the last time you gave that much effort into anything? Physically, mentally, spiritually. A lot of you haven't even been close to that point because you're soft. And you'll never reach the heights that it takes to give that kind of effort for days, for weeks, for months, for years. If you give that kind of effort, that's how you win. That's how you achieve great things. And that's what the name meant. And it truly means to me and how I gotten even to a, multi, a six figure job from nothing. From literally, I went from losing everything to a year making six figures. That's not that long of progress based on my discipline, my work ethic, shit like that. So I thought of that name and I found this crazy skull. If anyone listening knows our original, we had a skull design. Everything was the skull, right? And the crazy thing is, is our original, our original products didn't even have the brand name on them. They didn't have Till You Collapse on them. It was this weird skull I found on Google clip art. I'm telling you the real story here. This is all within 24 hours. That's how fast I took action. I figured out how to design. I downloaded a program. I started designing my first products. I figured out a company name. Within 24 hours, I had products in development the next day. Some of you motherfuckers have been starting a company for two years. You're slow. Speed and urgency is everything. In business and life. I'm urgent as fuck. You can ask Memo. I'm very urgent. I'm on these guys here to be urgent. Very <laughs> urgent. <laughs> Let me emphasize that a lot more. It's, it's <laughs> unnecessarily very urgent. <laughs> See, he thinks it's unnecessary. But he doesn't realize 10 years from now, I'm like, fuck. There, I get it. He'll get it one day. But One day. What I'm saying is, came up with that name. 
I figured out the fucking the designs. I found the clip art of a skull and I kind of cut cut it. I cut half of it off. So it was like I cut it and made it my own design. I cut it like cut parts off of it and I put right under it beast mode. Like right under your neck right here. Because, you know, beast mode back then, like beast mode was a hot little saying too. Like everyone would go beast mode. All the bros want to go beast mode, you know. Um, and literally it was a skull. And right around the neck it said beast mode. Oh, it did say till you collapse. On the back, on the bottom, there was a second print on the lower back <laughs> that said till you collapse across your ass. That was my first tank top design. And then, uh, what was the girl's tank top? There was a girl's tank top. I had a guy's tank top with that and a t-shirt and a girl's tank top that said, ah, oh, fuck, dude. I can't believe I can't remember this. Um, it says something about glutes. Something about glutes. Like a funny saying about glutes. God damn it. I can't believe I'm blanking right now. So what happens when you get old, folks. Fuck. Uh, anyways, I designed it. And my point here is it looked like shit. It looked like shit. I'm not a designer. When you train yourself in 24 hours, what do you think it's going to look like? But I made two designs. I put them in development. I found a printer. I had them printing. I had a company up and running with product printing in under a couple days. So I want you guys to listen to that and think about where you are in the progress of your company and the progress of what you're doing as far as taking action. Because action, taking action and creating momentum and actually doing something and figuring out as long as you, the way is very powerful. As opposed to if you're just sitting in the same spot. You're waiting for the perfect moment. You're waiting for everything to align. You, you need everything to be perfect. Years can go by. And I know some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So, you know, I, I made these shitty designs and I got to my hustle. I created social media, created my social media page. I created a website all within the first week. I didn't know how to do any of this shit. I never had done any of this shit. I just figured it out. It's called Google. Even back then, there was plenty of info on Google 10 years ago. There's no podcast. There's no YouTube. It wasn't different. You couldn't just look up a YouTube video. There was no YouTube. But there was still plenty of info on Google. You know, nine times out of ten, the questions I get, you can find the answer on Google. You guys know what Google is? Fucking check it before you waste someone's time with a dumbass question. Anyways, I figured it out. I put these products out, made a website, made a social media, let the world know, hey, I'm Brian. I have a fucking apparel brand. It's called Till You Collapse. This is what it means. This is what I stand for. What do you guys think about these shitty t-shirts and tank tops that look like a kid did them? Because in theory, a kid could design a better t-shirt than I did. And you know what happened? People supported me because people knew who I was. People know what I was about. People knew that translated into the meaning of the brand. And people started buying my shit. And before you know it, I flipped 300 bucks to 600 bucks. Wow. Doubled my money in about a week, two weeks, two weeks. And most of the hustle was, that I don't even know if I got an online order in that time. It was mainly face-to-face, -face, people in the gym, people I know. I would take a break, run to my car, sell a t-shirt on my car, meet someone, sell a t-shirt out of my trunk at a, at a gas station. Like, on the ground hustle. The actually... I'll still do to this day if that's what it takes. I still meet customers locally. Not in a while, but I'm not even against that because that's my work ethic. That's what I'm about. I, I'm, not, I'm not above any of that even still because if anyone wants to spend their hard-earned money on any product I produce, I'm fucking grateful because they can spend their money a lot of other places, especially nowadays more than ever. Now it's a crazy saturated market, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful for every dollar. I'm grateful for every customer now just as much as I was then. And that's never changed. And that never will change. And if I have to hop in my car and hand deliver something, that's the kind of person I am. I'm not above that. I wasn't and I won't ever be. So check yourself. Don't change. Who you are shouldn't change as your level of quote unquote success changes. So anyways, I went through those and, and you know, 
continue to make new designs, 300 to 600, 600 to 1200, and just doubling my money up, doubling my money up. And the profit margins weren't that good. You know, I was still making money, but especially for, you know, screen printed stuff like that and the price prices I was selling them at and what I was getting them at. You know, my profit margin at that point was probably about 40, 40 to 50 percent, which isn't that bad considering. Um, and I still didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> Figuring out business as I go. I'd never owned a business before. All I knew was I kept doubling my money and I kept making a little bigger orders and, and we kept getting more of a following online, social media. Um, and I was, you know, hustling, burning the candle at both ends. You know, just taking action. And at about a year, a year doing both. And I want you guys to listen to this because, you know, you need your nine to five job to pay your bills. So whatever you're doing, your comfortable job, your nine to five job, the thing that pays your bills, you need that. Whether it's just you single, whether you have a family you're supporting. Let me make one thing clear. When you take that fucking jump to be a hundred percent. Like you're really going to be an entrepreneur and not play it. And you have no one supporting you. You have no one backing you. It's just you. So if you're really, really doing it, not if you have fucking investors or a bunch of cash or you, you're well off. I'm talking about me. I have zero. I have maybe fucking 500 bucks in my bank account with a family of five I'm supporting, providing for. So I have no backup plan. Nothing. When you take that leap. And you're really going to be an entrepreneur. And that's all you're going to do 24-7. You better be ready. Because that's when reality hits. So make sure you build up your company. Make sure you build up your customer base. Make sure you, you really grind it out for a year, two years, three years. As long as it takes before you really, you know, okay, I can make this leap. Because all of your expenses are going to be paid from that business. Everything's going to be paid from that business. And whatever you're doing nine to five, that income's going to be gone like that. And reality really hits. And I remember when I did that, you know, that was a big decision. And I had, from every angle, I was hearing it. You're crazy. What are you doing? You can't support your family selling t-shirts. What are you talking about? Like social media? Like what's going on? You know, my dad, my family, like, like. They're old school. They had no idea, right? At this point, I wasn't making a lot of money. I was making like one, one thirty at the gym, <sighs> peanuts before taxes. Then I was making like a hundred from my side hustle, TYC. So combine, you know. But the thing is, is that a, you got to remember that a hundred in a business that's gross. So right off the bat, cut that in half if you're lucky. So that 100 turns into 50 because, you know, you take out expenses, product, stuff like that, right? That turns into 50. And then you pay taxes on top of that. So that dwindles, that dwindles down even more. So, you know, it's not that much money supporting a family of five. But, you know, at this point, I was working, you know, 7 a.m. till 2 a.m., and when I say I was actually working 7 a.m. To, to 1, 2 a.m., I'm actually working those hours. I'm actually working 18 to 20-hour days. A lot of you guys talk about working so hard, you're grinding so hard, and you have no fucking idea what, in reality, when you really break down your day. Let me break down your day. I would love to see your day. Because a lot of you guys think you're working so much, you're working so hard, and you're working at 30% capacity. And you're talking about, I'm tired, I'm overworked, I need a vacation. Motherfucker, you need to work. Shut the fuck up. You're tired and you need a vacation. You haven't done shit. It's, and it's just, it's crazy to me. So working that much a year, I mean, I was barely seeing my family. I mean, even worse than before, because you got to figure before, at least I got some time with them at night at this point. And, you know, I, during this stage, I'm communicating with them. You know, my wife, my kids, like, 
there's a reason why dad's doing this for our future. This is what we're going to do. You have to, have to communicate if you have if you if you if you have a family. They need to know why. They need to have a vision. They need to be part of that vision. Just like if you have a staff and you have a company, you need to talk to your staff about the long term goals. Like you want to give them raises. You you want to have them have big parts of the company. Like you have to share that with them and be genuine about it. And you have to work together to get to that point. Because if there's no advancement, if there's no light at the end of the tunnel, why is anyone doing anything? Like Memo, Courtney, Force, people I have here, they're like, I'm so grateful for them here. You know, I'm grateful for all my staff. My staff now, though, I'm so grateful for. Like, I care about their well being as much as mine, if not more. And I try to convey that to them. And I don't really know if they understand that. If you have a business owner, you need to truly care about your people because it's hard to find good people because there's a lot of shit people out there. And if you find good people, you need to communicate with them. You need to let them know what you want for them. And hopefully it aligns what they want for themselves, right? And you have to paint a picture and you have to take care of them. You have to be you know, grateful for them. And you have to build something together. It can't be about just you. It has to be about them and you together building something. I don't know how I got off on that tangent. Anyways, trying to figure out where I was at at this point. Real and, fast. Huh? Um, your first pair of leggings. You said you were doing working for a year. How long until you got your first pair of leggings? Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good when I hear this. So I was mainly just T-shirts and tank tops. You know, T-shirts and tank tops. That was really the only product I had, right? Mm-hmm. And then I had some like, you know, joggers and sweat shorts and yeah, you know, that kind basic of stuff. Thing, yeah. Like long sleeve stuff, like bro shit, you know. But then I remembered about, <clears throat> I think it was about three years in. Mm-hmm. So three years in, pretty long in. So, you know, I, I back to where I was, I was a year in and I took that leap. I quit my full-time job and I was out, you know, 24 hours a day. There was no one telling me what to do but me. When you're when you're actually doing it and you're in it, you're the only one that controls what you do. You can either do fucking dick all day and stare at the wall and pretend like you're working and you're so busy, or you're productive. You're figuring things out. You're making connections. You're actually putting work in. And that's the most difficult thing once you, you jump in that full-time entrepreneur is managing your time because there's no one telling you what to do. There's no one telling you when or what to do. It's you. It's all on you. Your time management, what you actually do. And then it's always, a, you get a direct result. It's how you manage your time, the work you put in. So I'm doing that. I'm on the streets. And the first four years of doing that um, were the hardest thing I've ever done, man. I mean, like, you know, I probably left my job too soon because you figure, like I was talking about, I was making a hundred grand. 50 if I'm lucky after expenses and taxes that's significantly less money than my 130 150 and then after taxes you know that's I probably took 40 grand pay cut at that point and I was already broke so I couldn't afford a 40 grand pay cut you know I wasn't as good with numbers I was just no I was making six figures here I'm making six figures here I can't keep working this much so I jumped in and then I found out that wasn't enough, obviously, is to support my income. So getting back to that, when you do it, make sure you're making more than enough after expenses, after taxes, to support your income and then some. And make sure you're doing that for six months to a year. And I didn't do that. So I jumped in. I'm like, oh, fuck, reality hit me. So I'm literally working 15, 18 hours a day trying to build up this business, trying to sell any way I can on social media, in person, every channel, everything I can do. And reality is that's still not enough money in the end of the day to feed my family, pay my rent, keep my lights on. So I'm not talking about saving up money. I don't even have enough money to pay my bills. So I'm having to hustle on the side, flip shit, do shit I probably shouldn't and don't want to talk about just to make money to pay my basic bills. Not just for a month, for years. Talk about stress. Talk about pressure. What the fuck are you built for? How are you built? All I knew was I wasn't going back. 
So really, the leggings. To get back to what Memo was talking, because he loves, he wants to prance around some fucking leggings. Well, here's the thing, though. So you said three years, right? It took you three years to get your first pair. So technically, you changed your entire company once you were three years in into leggings. So now that's pretty much all you are. No, no, no. I, I no, no. I, I let me tell. Go ahead, go ahead. I let you go. Go ahead. But I'm just trying to think. Think about it. So 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 about three years in, um, I got my first pair of leggings. And, you know, it was a crazy prints. The leggings I used to wear were crazy. I don't remember. You guys remember back in the day, there were these muscle print leggings where you wore them and it looks like an anatomy chart. Like it just looked like muscles, right? And like Hulk and like crazy, crazy legging print. Super thin material. It wasn't see-through, but it was thin, super stretchy, super cheap product. I think it cost me like $5 to make. And I was selling them for 29 bucks. Pretty good margins, five and 29, do the math. So pretty good margins, respectively, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but just not that good a product, kind of a fun, gimmicky product. People were wearing them all over the place, you know, but back then it was kind of more the vibe. You know, I had crazy leggings with donuts on them and pizza and burgers and just funny shit. Like, you know, this, these, these girls that are super fit with amazing bodies are wearing fucking junk food on them when you know that's not what they're eating to look like that. So it was just kind of funny stuff. But really the leggings took off. And the leggings took off, and you know, like I said, the first few years, the revenue was growing. So it went from like a hundred grand to like a hundred twenty grand, hundred forty grand. So it's a little slow growth, but still significant growth. And then the leggings, the third year, it definitely grew. Um, and the leggings were selling more than anything. The leggings would sell, and the leggings I was making best margin on. So I was like, not only were the leggings selling way more than the t-shirts and the tank top and stuff like that, but I'm making way more leggings on the money on the leggings. So it was the best of both worlds, right? I'm like, fuck it. Let me just start selling more women's shit. Let me get so in business, what I'm saying is focus on what works. And here's another thing. A lot of you guys try to do too much. It's okay to have one or two amazing products that your customer base loves. A lot of you guys worry about having way too much. You want to have so many products. You want to have, you think more is better. More is not always better. My number one selling product that I make hundreds of thousands of dollars on a year is black leggings. That's one skew. That's one thing. Black leggings makes me the most money more than almost all my other products combined. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, I want all these colors. I want these prints. I want this done for fabric. But at the end of the day, the consumer will tell you what they want. Listen to the consumer and go towards that. Don't, it's not on you. You're not making the decision of what you think you want, what you think is best. Listen to the consumer. They will tell you what they want. They will tell you what they need. Ask them, talk to them, send out emails, create polls. Anyways, I'm like, there's something to this. I'm making way more money on the leggings. They're blowing up. So I just really started ramping up more to leggings and less everything else. And we had the biggest increase there like that fourth year. You know, it was going great. And then the trends changed. Everything changed. Fashion changes the fucking blink. Fashion is the bitch. Fashion is a hard ass injury. I'll tell you right now, you thinking about getting into fashion apparel, it's one of the hardest industries in the world. So buckle the fuck up. You better be get ready to fucking eat fucking top ramen and grind it out because this shit is hard. I'll tell you from firsthand experience and I'm in it right now. So I went towards that. We had our biggest year ever because of that. We were having the highest margin products. Girls were going crazy. We were selling a lot of leggings. Things were going good. And then, like I said, the fashions changed, the trends changed. We went from our best year, it was like 160, maybe 180 grand. Still peanuts. Gross. It's still fucking peanuts. That kind of growth over four years is not that fast to growth. In reality, companies don't grow that fast, though. A lot of people hear about these stories as explosive growth, 100, 200, 300, 400 percent, which is great as possible. We grew at those percentages as well later on. But in reality, as long as you're having growth, that's a positive thing. A lot of companies take a long time to grow or a long time to hit that 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 fucking hit their stride and start growing at bigger percentages and you can really start making some real money. So went from our best year, 160, 180, trends changed. Nobody wanted that quality anymore. 
They wanted more of that Lululemon style, really high quality, really more neutral colors, not so in your face. Like I just want black leggings, gray leggings, that's it. Super high quality fabric. And we went from our best year to our worst year. So 160K to about 80 grand. 80 grand gross supporting a family of, no, still five. Still five at this time. But still, 80 grand gross in California, broke as fuck. That's after taxes and expenses. I made like 30, 40 grand that year supporting a family of five. Five years into a, four years into a company. Did you hear what I just said? You think you're stressed? You think you have it bad? You think you're in a tight spot? Imagine that spot I was in as a man, as a father, as a husband, as a provider. I'm in it though. I'm experiencing it. I'm figuring out. I'm doing what I need to do to pay my bills because I'm not going to lose everything again. At that point is when I took action again. All I do is take action. When I told you guys to take fucking action, I'm like, this ain't working. Just like our camera's not working. The camera just shut off, baby. Because Memo doesn't know how to... He overheats the bitch. Anyways... I was like, you know what? This is our fourth year. I'm still doing it out of my trunk and my garage at this time. I'm not treating this as a real business. This is a real business. I can't do this out of the house anymore. As much as I, you know, being around the wife and kids all day long, it's not a real business. It's in my house. It's it's just distractions. It's not it's not a thing. I'm like, I need to get this out of the house. I need to have a warehouse. This is a real business. So think about this. I'm already broke as fuck, not making enough money to pay my bills. I just have my worst year ever, making less money than I've made since I was a fucking 18-year-old kid, supporting a family of five. And I say, I'm going to move it out of my house and move it into a warehouse and take on another bill of a 1000 bucks a month rent? Yeah, that's called taking action and making shit happen. I moved it out to the warehouse totally revamped the website, found new suppliers, totally revamp our brand. I went from $29 leggings to $60 leggings. So we both basically doubled our price. And that's really when everything took off. And you guys know that story. I've told it multiple times. That's everything took off crazy amount. But the main point is guys is like the journey is what's fucking beautiful. Like that story I just told you of fucking grit in the trenches, I'll never forget that. That wasn't that long ago for me. You see me now, I have some nice things and a little bit of success. I'm still grinding. Memo knows how hard we're grinding over here. He's here. I share this shit with him. I talk about my team here. I don't fucking, I'm not some CEO that hides behind my officer desk. And if you guys are listening to me, you need to talk to your people. They need to know about the company. Good and bad. They need to learn. You need to educate them because the goal is them to be leaders of this company. And we're grinding this shit out together. And it's fucking amazing, dude. But the journey, a lot of you guys want to get past the journey and you want to get on top of this mountain of success and you want to have all the millions and all the cars and everything that you dreamed of. And that's such an empty place. I'm telling you the memories and the journey and what it creates and what it turns you into when it builds you, the experiences, the lessons, the grit, the character. It's created who you see right here, this man that you follow. The the knowledge that I have is from doing. It's from taking action. It's not from books. It's not from seminars. It's not from any of that shit. Yes, now that I'm involving, I'm investing in myself, I'm part of groups, I go to seminars, I read books, and that just amplifies, that throws gas on top of the fire, that's a small percentage on top of what I already am doing based on what I've done. You can do so much more by just doing and taking action and figuring out than you've ever imagined. And you know what? It may not be for you. You may realize I'm sticking with my nine to five because I can't handle this kind of stress. I can't handle this kind of pressure. And you know what? Most people can't. And that's the reality of it. And that's fine because there's 
business owners and entrepreneurs and there's employees and that's great. Find a company with someone like me that's going to be grateful for you and really treat you and bring you out to be the best that you can be as an employee, not somewhere that takes advantage of you and you're just a number and treats you like a piece of shit. Anyways, that's all I wanted. I want to go down a little memory lane on this podcast. No, you got anything? No, we just got some big new stuff on the way, at least. Yeah. Um, it works. Yeah. But yeah, we got a lot of big shit going. So, like I said, um, <laughs> this apparel and fashion thing is difficult, <laughs> but, you know, we're not quitting. There's no quitting us, but we got a lot of stuff coming. I'm really excited what we got coming as a brand. Another, like another evolution, I feel like. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It'll be different. So, yeah, for sure. So, guys, I hope you got one thing from this. Please, if you did, let me know. I really appreciate it. It makes me feel good because sometimes I feel like I'm just spending my time 40 minutes, however the fuck long it's been. How long has it been? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. See, I have a pretty good take on time. One camera overheated because this guy got 8K fucking zoomed into my nose hairs and shit. Mm-hmm. Gotta make guys see him clearly. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, guys, I appreciate you. I hope you got something from that story. It's fun to relive it. I need to relive it more because sometimes it gets blurry. Telling you, oh, and you get 40 years old, shit, you forget shit. But it brings me back to being in that spot. And it was crazy times. But like I said, it makes me even more grateful for where I'm at now. But appreciate you guys. I'm out. Pull up in motorcades. I got a show today. It's all I'm trying to do. 